Hi, and welcome to my podcast. I'm your host, Aino Merku. And in this podcast, we hear about decentralized collaboration at scale. And in it, we speak with Kate Beecroft, who's head of their ecosystem of DowStack. Now, what DowStack is, it's an open source software stack designed to support a global collaborative network. The stack can be used to build organizations for any kind of collective work. And it also contains tools to link these organizations together. So as the network grows, all its member organizations are strengthened. Organizations built on DAO stack belong in a new category structure called DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations. DAOs are organizations that run on peer-to-peer software backbones and empower groups of people to make non-hierarchical decisions about shared resources like funds, for example. And those working on DAO stack believe that these structures have the potential to change the world by making collaboration radically more accessible, direct and scalable. So without any further ado, we'll get stuck into the podcast and have a listen to what Kate had to say. Hi, my name is Kate B. Groft. I am... I fill many roles really right now. I'm the head of ecosystem at an amazing company called DAO Stack, um, which is building uh, DAOs on the decentralized web. I also am the co-founder of a company called Greater Than. We are um, consultants and specialists in the human side of decentralization. So we're really thinking about once these systems kind of come to fruition, um, the decentralized web and different ways for people to govern decisions, make decisions on their own work and their own life. Really, what is the, the human element of that, what we call the soft, the soft governance and the, the off-chain protocols. Greater than kind of helps companies transition what, to what we call a self-managing way of working, where people, there are, there is much less hierarchy. Sometimes it's called bossless. So people are taking decisions for themselves, so we introduce them to many practices for that, that kind of work. My, before that, I was I'm part of a, a global network of entrepreneurs called Inspiral, started in New Zealand. And we have been prototyping and experimenting right on the very edge of what's possible in new ways of working for the last eight years. I mean, this is a really important question. What, what does the future look like? Is it decentralized? The answer for all of us working in kind of what's known as Web3 is let's hope so. And basically that is a lot of the effort that goes into the kind of decentralized governance component of blockchain is really building the foundations for a decentralized future. Because if we don't, we are really at risk of, you know, corporations, the big the big four, as well as many others and states, just having so much control and power over our everyday existence. Matan, the, the CEO of and founder of DAOStack and I were just having a conversation about this. We really see DAOs or decentral, decentralized autonomous organizations as the future of how humans organize and coordinate. And with much more autonomy and much more ability to, to do what's right for them and to make decisions of their own lives outside of what we have currently been doing and how we organize for the last 200 or so years and those is mostly in corporations so yeah it's kind of like DAOs are collaborative networks that give true agency to people to govern themselves up against say for example a centralized version of crypto like libra versus bitcoin which is truly decentralized whereas DAOs also i mean a lot of people this is two things it's kind of like the the battle between corporate owned highway or public owned you know you're giving the governance to the whole model, actually, of governance is for the way our society is. It's it's and the same with money. It's kind of should be the other way around. It's it's kind of been inverted because of the control. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for for a long time now, we've been operating with these two dominant structural systems as the only possibility, which is you know state-based regulation or I suppose centralized corporate control. And now that we have this this technology that that does make another way possible so yeah i think like libra is a hugely interesting thing i suppose that's really taken a lot of people by a bit of shock i mean we always knew something was coming and perhaps on the one side it's doing a lot of has some net positive gain for the the crypto community and the blockchain world because it's really raising the volume and probably a lot of the headlines that we're seeing is related somewhat to this and even if it's successful 
this gives them just unprecedented ability to to control all parts of the pipeline in the system. How do we want the future to look like? And is you know, a, a huge centralized player making it much more accessible for people to use cryptocurrency in the blockchain really in our best interests? Um, I would say no. I think the challenge around this is more people don't care about actually how technology works. You know, just give me my hair dryer. I don't want to know how it was put together. I don't know. I don't even care how it was engineered. I just want it to work. Yeah. And that is a lot of issue around with cryptocurrency. It's not user friendly and it's good side of, of Libra. But I think it will take people, the education takes time and people have to become, don't really understand what they're doing and they do it out of convenience. That is the potential disaster or sort of like being kind of a little bit blind to what you're going into, all in the name of convenience. 100%. I think that's totally correct that the, the majority of people totally, I don't know really how a lot of things I use, like the hairdryer or even the internet, truly work at the, the many, many layers of complexity that are there. And the same with the blockchain, like we can't expect people that to interface with such a clunky system and people are really wanting to use something that's easy so this is the big challenge of our whole industry is to be aiming towards building those interfaces that, that let the user interact with the blockchain and but they don't even know that they are so we're not there yet um obviously it's it is taking time but we just can't take our, our focus off those off that goal but hopefully the true the true power of decentralization does enable a stronger force to actually emerge alongside the things like Libra. What will it change? What will it sort of a decentralized economy, one that's not owned by the corporates? What does it mean for the for the person on the street? You know, you, you mentioned a couple of things there, but what's the benefit? How I see it in a much in a kind of a concrete or a tangible way is that since the internet or Web2 kind of dawned, there has been this like inherent latent possibility of what humans could do together when they're truly able to coordinate where, you know, borders and uh, the kind of, some of the, the constraints that we've had throughout the lifetime of humanity don't exist because we have this ability to create relationships and talk and plan and meet people with the common interests on the total opposite side of the world to us. Um, so, you know, there's an amazing book called Here Comes Everybody by an academic called Clay Shirky who really outlines this and the height of like energy that Web2 kind of brought about with the emergence of social networks. Like half, we've, we've got this new economy where, where people can really produce and be compensated for what they produced. You know, form groups where they actually, they have a cause. They they find the revenue to, to fund themselves, to carry out the actions necessary to support that cause, whatever it is. That kind of amazing potential was cut short because you know we saw like the, the key platform movers um, centralized platform movers take the ability of the true kind of prosumer and like take the the margin into their own for their own needs right like youtube facebook all of those players there is alignment there but they're extracting the value for their own for their stakeholders their shareholders under the, the current model so the, this notion of like platform cooperatism is really still a potential that I think can be realized by the decentralized, by a decentralized web and economy. And yeah, if we think of the social network as a collaborative network where if the people could actually fund themselves, make governance decisions over the money, have an instant transfer of money to do that, that we could actually see us start to really tackle some of the big problems that currently the systems that we have just prevent us. I even think I think the word the community, you know, it's coming together of a unity of, of people. The way human beings naturally collaborate, it's 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 we've been disallowed that by the technology, by the current system of technology that we have. Absolutely. And I think the key thing is that communities are great. For me a community is like sub Dunbar's number, which is 150. I mean, maybe a sociologist would disagree with me. But where it starts to get really interesting is when community and community join and there's like this whole kind of mesh or network of communities and that becomes a network and the collaborative power of networks is very strong and that's what really I think we're trying to build towards in the in Web3 with DAOs is 
is the notion of an organizational form which is a network and a, the definition of a network or an open network or a collaborative network is that anyone can come and plug and play as long as the the principles and the guidelines to do that are clear and that's what happens in a DAO. Um, it's a it's a kind of a unstoppable meld between a social network and a corporation where you can't anyone can come and stop at play and like kind of as long as they're sticking to the principles and the, the, the protocol which is enforced by the social contract. Thanks for listening and checking out my podcast. You can head over to Spotify and find my podcast there or on Apple iTunes. Subscribe to my podcast on my website. You can head over to www.inaom.io for further details.